Dartmoor is a vast upland region in southern Devon, covering 954 square kilometres. It's a dramatic and mysterious place, having inspired the likes of Arthur Conan Doyle and Agatha Christie. It can also seem harsh, unforgiving, and even a bit bland, with its stark vistas of grass and rock. But there is a great deal of diverse history hidden amongst these tours, and my journey through this ancient history will begin, rather unglamorously, in a car park. But this is not our destination for the day. We want to kick off by getting a real sense of the height and scale of the moor. And we thought, what better way to do that than head straight for the highest point? Now, it's a real testament to the enduring wilderness of this place, that even from this closest car park, that highest point is still an hour's hike away. So let's just say, I'm glad I'm not the one carrying the camera. So let's go. The lovely flat walk around the tranquil reservoir unfortunately only served to lull us into a false sense of security about the scale of the challenge to come. Indeed, I didn't know just how grateful I would be to be the one unburdened by gear, because the journey ultimately turned out to be 346 ah. meters of constant climbing. So no wonder it took us longer than we expected to reach the top. Now, the highest point is named, somewhat appropriately, High Wilhays. And with a sturdy pair of boots, some nice waterproof clothing, food, a map, and preferably no heavy film equipment, you can easily do this walk yourself, as long as the army aren't firing. Now, it's a bit of a slog, but uh, hopefully once we get there, you'll see that it's worth the hike. Indeed, the charms of Dartmoor have not been lost on our armed forces, as they've used it for some nice peaceful target practice since the early 1800s. So it's always a good idea to check the firing times before you enter the military area. So, we're in the firing zone. Do not touch any military debris. It may explode and kill you. Can't say clearer than that. Although I've been calling our destination High Will Haze because of how it's spelled, if you speak to a local, they'll call it High Willies. Like many English place names, this may be somewhat humorous to the more juvenile mind, but in this case, the name is well justified. It may well derive from the Welsh word Gwilfa, meaning watching place suggesting that there was once a beacon fire here. Although you'd be unlikely to be able to see it on a day like this. This is not High Wilhays. It's been a marathon to get up here, even more than I expected. And it's so cold that I had to put two extra layers on. But in spite of all that effort, it was all for nothing because our esteemed producer left his Dartmoor OS map at home and the frankly inadequate naked eye decided that this massive chunk of rock must be the highest point. But it's not. High Will Ace itself is actually over there. So let's get going again before I get blown off, eh? at last, is the actual highest point on Dartmoor, High Wilhays. But I think our mistake is forgivable, since until the Ordnance Survey came along and mapped the place, most people did actually think that Yes Tor was higher, with only locals knowing the truth. As a matter of fact, there's only a couple of metres height difference between them, so if I stood on Yes Tor and jumped, it's quite possible that my head would actually briefly be the highest natural point on Dartmoor. Looking around here, it really doesn't feel like you're up that high. 
It certainly doesn't look like a typical mountain, but when you see the rest of the Devon in the distance, it really is a long way down. The truth is, we're actually a massive 621 meters above sea level here. And they don't call this the roof of Devon for nothing. This is the highest point in England south of the Peak District, and one of only two peaks classified as mountains south of there, with the other, of course, being yes, tall. But why is it so high here? Why have we got this massive elevated area far above the pancake of Devon that we can see out there? Well, that's what we're going to find out. The answer to that question is all around us. And it's the first step towards understanding the geology of this remarkable place. And that answer is granite. This is the rock that we can see literally poking out of the grass all across the moor. And it came to be here because of a remarkable process that you might remember from school geography. Millions of years ago, 280 million years ago in fact, a massive spur of magma pushed up into the Earth's crust and cooled very slowly to eventually form granite. As this granite thrust up out of the ocean floor, it eventually formed a mountain range where Dartmoor now sits, which almost unbelievably was inhabited by some of the first dinosaurs. But this was all millions of years ago. And since the Dartmoor and Devon of today is obviously not a mountain range, it doesn't explain why this area is now still so much higher than the county around it. To answer that particular question, we need to look at one key property of granite, one that enables it to dish out the most excruciating knee scrapes and makes it perfect for the very classiest kitchen worktops. And that is that it's really, really hard. Because you see, after Dartmoor's brief 135 million year stint as a mountain range, the area actually became flooded again. And over the course of the next 80 million years, the decomposed bodies of sea creatures formed a layer of chalk over the top of the granite and the surrounding area. This chalk was then exposed when the seas retreated again at the end of the age of the dinosaurs. And this is where the hardness of the granite becomes so important. Because, as you can see, with these pieces of board chalk that I've got here, I can wear them away with just my fingers. But if I tried that with the granite, it's more likely my fingers that will be wearing away. And so, since that point, 65 million years ago, the chalk and other rocks of the southwest have been gradually worn away, with the hard granite itself eroding far more slowly, leaving it sitting much higher than the surrounding area. This has left a string of granite uplands all across the southwest, even taking in the Scilly Isles, poking stubbornly out of the sea. But the biggest of all of those all 954 square kilometers of it, you guessed it, is Dartmoor. 